Since owning this 1963 Ford 2000 tractor, I've always had the issue where in cold weather, the temperature never comes up to full operating temperature. So I'm going to try to solve that problem with putting in a new thermostat. I got this thermostat kit right here. It comes with the thermostat and the housing gasket. I ordered it from yesterdaystractor.com. Uh, here's a look at the part number. I'll put it up here in the uh, in some text so you can see it. And pretty much this will cover a thermostat replacement on four tractors from 1953 to 1964, whether it's a 600 series, a 800 series, Jubilee, 2000, 4000. All these uh, 53 through 64 with the gasoline engines, they have this, uh, basically the same setup on how everything's on it. So this should help you if you got one of them tractors. One of the first things you're going to want to do is drain the coolant out of your system. On most of these radiators, I'm here on what you would call the passenger side, the right-hand side. At the bottom of the radiator, there's a little drain valve right here that you can open up, and it's got two holes in it that uh, the fluid will drain out of. I've already got mine emptied out, so I'm good there. I'm gonna go ahead and shut this back off. Sometimes these drain valves can be rusted shut, froze up, where you can't get it open. If that's the case on yours, if you got the radiator out, you can replace that valve, but with it in the tractor, it's kind of hard. But if you can't get that open to drain it, just pull your bottom lower radiator hose off and you can drain the coolant out that way. That'll get the coolant level low enough to where you ain't gotta worry about it interfering with the thermostat housing up here. Then I'm gonna wanna get this upper radiator hose off this thermostat housing right here. It's just a clamp right there to loosen up. There's a clamp on the upper part of it here if I wanted to take it completely off. But I believe I can uh, just get this end loose and manage it off there that way. I did also order new uh, upper and lower uh, radiator hoses. So I'm just gonna be replacing both them while I'm doing this. Now's the perfect time to replace all that stuff while you got the coolant out of the system. I got the hose clamp loose on this hose. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it off. Get that out of the way. Next part is gonna be getting that thermostat housing off. On my tractor, these two bolts on the ther uh, thermostat housing are half inch size. Then it just comes off. You can see that thermostat is stuck in that housing. There it goes. There's a look at the old thermostat. And I'm not sure if this is the original one or not. The design of it looks different than the newer one. Looks different than all the thermostats I ever changed in any vehicles. You see it has like a butterfly door on it that opens up. Kind of like a throttle plate on a carburetor. That's interesting. Next, I'll make sure I get the mating surface on the thermostat housing and on the front of the block good and clean. I'm going to use a Scotch Brite pad to clean it. You can use a, a uh, plastic scraper or if you use something like a razor blade, be careful not to gouge it into the metal. You can take something like carburetor cleaner or brake cleaner to help clean it too. You just want to make sure that stuff's dried and cleaned up good before you put it back together. And don't be spraying it inside the block on the front of the engine. On these gaskets, I like to use this Permatex Super 300 uh, gasket sealant. This stuff works really good. It helps it uh, hold in place onto your thermostat housing while you're installing it. It helps it seal. But this stuff is designed to use with paper tight gaskets. Uh, it doesn't get hard, it stays soft and it helps seal it. I kind of jumped ahead of myself, 
but the thermostat has to go in the housing before you set the gasket down there's this little recess part where the thermostat sits down into then you put the gasket on I'm gonna set this on a paper towel in the meantime the thermostat it goes in with the spring side into the engine block so this part will go in towards the housing like that another thing is because this sits mounted vertical on the front of the engine block sometimes it can be hard to get that to stay in place so a little trick I do get you a piece of wire maybe a foot or two long run it through this housing side of the thermostat put it halfway in the wire and then just straighten it out like that then run that wire through the housing and pull it on through and then you can position your thermostat where you need it to be and now I can hold it tight in there with this wire once I get done installing it I can take this wire and just pull it out and then that way it stays in place while I'm installing it I've got my gasket on now I'm gonna put it on the front of the engine block when I'm tightening these two fasteners down I tried to evenly space it out tighten up one and tighten up the other some and go back and forth that way it pulls it down flat be sure to tighten it up it's good and snug but just be careful not to over tighten it because you're going to an old cast iron block and it's easy to strip things out as you see I'm using my hand further up the ratchet closer to the head of it so I'm not putting so much force on it because if I got my hand down here I can really tighten them up and break them off then I can just pull my wire on out of the thermostat housing just like that at this point it's just a matter of putting all the hoses back on making sure they're tight and then putting the coolant back in the system I'm gonna be putting fresh coolant in it putting fresh hoses on it um, you want to make sure your antifreeze is at least 50 50 mix me personally I mix mine 75 percent antifreeze 25 water to me I've had less problems with water pump seals going out mixing it 75 25 versus 50 50. now that's just me you can do it your way After putting some antifreeze in it I have a very small leak in the thermostat housing gasket I'm gonna have to pull it back off and take a look at it I know I cleaned the surfaces and used that gasket sealant but what I'm thinking is as old as this is maybe that metal is just a little bit warped if I don't see anything visually wrong with it what I might do is just take the gasket out and get some high temp RTV silicone and seal it that way without the gasket. That way it fills in them imperfect uh, places where it may be warped or something. Well, something very unexpected happened. The thermostat housing broke. So I'm gonna have to hunt down one of these online and order it and replace this before I can finish fixing it. This is not uncommon from old cast iron thermostat housings. They, they tend to break. That cast iron gets brittle over age and time with all the heat and all. So, once we get one of them back in, I'll finish up this video. All right, it's been a few days and I finally got my new thermostat housing in the mail. I ordered it off of yesterdaystractors.com, same place I got the thermostat and my hoses. 
Also, this time, I got this uh, RTV silicone gasket maker that's designed for water uh, pumps and thermostat housings. So I'm going to apply this per the directions. It says put a sixteenth to a quarter inch bead around the surface and the bolt holes. Then install it with the bolts till finger tighten. Let it sit for an hour, then tighten it down, and then let it sit up for 24 hours before you add coolant to the system. So that's what I'm going to do. It ain't the prettiest in the world, but that's how I put my uh, silicone onto this part. Now I'm going to install it per directions, and after this sets up for 24 hours, I'll be back to finish it up. All right, it's been 24 hours. I let this thing sit and I just filled up the antifreeze to the appropriate level. You can see before starting it, there's no leaks this time. I'm also checking around the hoses and stuff. If you look down there in the radiator, the antifreeze should be about an inch above the uh, core flutes inside the radiator. You can see there's some head space in the top of the tank. Since these tractors do not have overflow tanks, they just have like this, this overflow tube that'll just drain out in the ground if it overheats. You wanna leave some head space in there so there's room for expansion. As long as you got maybe half an inch to an inch over them flutes, then you'll be good to go. Of course, double check your level after you've ran it a few minutes, uh, just in case any air pockets have worked out anywhere else in the system. And there's no leaks with it running. It's only been running about three or four minutes. You can already see that the temperature gauge is coming up. So that new thermostat is working right. That shows that my old thermostat wasn't working. It's about 30 degrees outside right now, and it's never warmed up this quick. It's never came up this high in this cold of weather. It's holding a good steady temperature. So that's how I changed the thermostat in my old Ford tractor. Like I said, these tractors from 1953 to 1964, they all had the same designed engine. They used the same thermostat. Now one thing is if you go trying to find a thermostat, make sure it's for this uh, tractor. These thermostats are, I believe, they're uh, set to open at 160 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, the model tractors that were newer than this, like 65 and up, I think they had like more of like a 180 degree uh, thermostat. But uh, but them tractors also, they have more pressure on the cooling system. These tractors only have either three or four PSI uh, radiator caps on them versus the newer tractors after this, they had like the more automotive 13, 14 pounds of pressure. So make sure you get the right thermostat these engines don't run that hot and you should be good to go the only other advice i have for you when you're doing this is i would go with the rtv silicone gasket maker that i used with this the uh, second time that old uh, metal with that uh, cast iron head and that cast iron uh, thermostat housing you don't know how that metal might be warped that paper gasket it didn't seal good and I wound up breaking the thermostat housing because of it. That uh, silicone gasket maker I used, it's not leaking one bit. Just follow the directions on the, uh, on the package. Make sure you let it set up for that 24 hours. I have used that stuff before. Be in a hurry, not let it set up long enough and it'll leak. But I let this one set for 24 hours and I didn't have any problems with it. So I hope this video helps you out. If it did so, give it a thumbs up, comment down below, and subscribe to this channel. Thank you for watching.